Hi, it's Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gun World magazine, Shooting Country TV. Welcome to Life at a Range. We're here at a secret location just off the A66, somewhere near Penrith. Somewhere near. Somewhere. I'm obviously here with the sartorially elegant Mr. Mick Garvey, uh, dressed resplendently in uh, Jack Pike. In a Jack Pike diesel camo, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you, that's very nice. I got sent this by Rotheries. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Helps keep my stomach in, which I'm really you, you were looking, dare I say, delicious in that? <laughs> it's exactly what I like to say, like, I like to hear. So what are we doing today? Well, because we've got Mick here, and Mick is, well, pest control, squirrel conservation. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. all pests of all sizes. <laughs> so what are we doing today? Well, we have this, the Daystate Alpha Ball. Uh, Mick, do you want to tell us something about it? Right, it's the... Uh, they call it the, the bullpup sibling of the uh, of the of the delta wolf 30 cal electronic all set in it all adjustable everything can be adjusted through the electronics in it on the touch screen wow. apparently uh like i said 30 cal at the moment we've got the mtc optics king cobra king cobra yeah uh we start off with uh oh, we, we when we first got it, it it had the the swap swap prismatic prismatic on it yeah which is nice but this is more suitable for what me and both yeah. Gary did, but both build yeah uh Lovely looking gun, absolutely superb. No silence on it, so at the moment it's pretty loud. <laughs> and I mean loud, it's under foot pound, 30 cal. Uh, indoors, it's gonna make your ears ring out, though, it's not yeah. so bad. Uh, we'll probably do a sound test on it. It's not See exactly idea. what it's doing. Yeah, it's not uh, a bad idea. But what do you think? Well, I mean, um, we're filming this, actually, we've already shot it, because we wanted to get, uh, get everything done, and we're filming the intro towards the end of the shoot. <laughs> so, so we have already shot it. Um, I'm amazed at that kind of power you get, and the, it's good that you don't need to wear ear pro. I, yeah. I've never once thought this, you know, that, that hurts. I think if you're inside in an indoor range, it'd be a different thing. Yeah. But out here, but it's, the, the sound's easily lost. I, I think the other thing that is, I'm really interested in is the fact that you can adjust the power. So you can have the full 100 foot pounds, but if you did have to move indoors and you didn't want that, Huge amount of power. Yeah, you, you could just turn it down. You drop it down so far. I don't think it's all the way down to twelve foot pound, but it'll go down. Really yeah. Down Apparently, the other thing you can do is you can actually change out barrels and actions, so you can actually change calibers uh, and stuff like that. But the the one thing that you will notice is our groups. Uh, they're, they're they're not fantastic. But have you noticed that as the more and more we were shooting, the tighter they're getting. The tighter they were getting. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. it's letting in, but we're running out of time, and it's exactly. going to start raining soon. Is that by the two pen red? Yes. And if we don't get rain at least once a day, the lakes will dry up. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I also like, I think it could, it could have had a recent barrel change. It was. It, it, oh. it it's got a brand, uh, Tony, when that was a 2.5 calibre, I think. And we've got to say huge thanks to uh, today State, who's lent it to us, and to, to Mark Wilson at Derwent. Derwent uh, uh, Air Guns, yeah, absolutely. Who Big arranged, thanks, Mark. yeah, thanks, Mark, because he arranged for it to be shipped over to him and, and Mick picked it up and, yep. and all that, and it just made life so much easier. But but this, I think, was originally in a 2.5 calibre, and, and I said to Tony, go big or go home, let's go for the 30. So, yeah. Which could explain why it's, the, the grouping's slowly getting better. Yeah. But it depends on you know, how much time we've got to play with it, and we've got to, things to do. Exactly, but we're, we're going to do some, we're gonna do some group testing, we're going uh, to shoot some ballistic gel in a future video, and we're going to take on 30 calibre, 100 foot HFT, but you're going to have to wait a little bit for that one. So, welcome to Life at a Range. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in a second. Bye. How many uh, shots will go into the magazine, Mick? I believe it's 10. 10 shots? It's YouTube friendly as well, 10 shots in a, yeah, in a weapon. Yeah, yeah. And these are 30 calibre. 30 cal, I think 50 grains. Range Master. Putting out around about a uh, hundred foot pounds. Exactly, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots actually. Eight shots, excellent. Yeah. But as you can see, they are quite. You would not want to be on the wrong end of that. No, no. I mean, I was about to ask a silly question then about obviously it's a lot more lethal than a, a, a sub 12 foot pound because a sub 12 is lethal. It is. But I assume this is now on a different level. This is more lethal as the further distance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've all seen videos and films and talked to people who shoot 
the subtotal of that 200 yards hitting the sort of targets. Mm. Whether that's right or not, I don't know, but it's not something I want to do on quarry. Yeah. So it's, uh, this sort of stuff, you can guarantee it's going to get out there and still have plenty of residual power left yeah. when you get to the target, which is what you need. Last thing you want to do is wound anything. With something of this kind of power as an air rifle, do, I assume we still got to think about over penetration, that it could very easily pass through an animal and straight out the other side. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's, it's probably not much different to you. You get a sub 12 in 177, you get plenty, have plenty of over penetration mm. uh, with that. But obviously, these, and it depends what, slug, what, what pellets and slugs you're using. Yeah. Use some of the slugs, they've got open cavity on the front and they will expand and just, just like a, a hollow point bullet. Yeah. Uh, which, is, which works quite well. And you can get various pellets that work. But this sort of thing, it's going to hit it and it's it's all over. I mean, like, you're not going to be aiming for its brain at this distance. Yeah. 100 yards. Oh, right. Uh, you know, a, a body shot, 100 foot pound rifle, even a 50, 40 foot pound rifle, there's going to be enough to traumatise it and it'll finish it all off. The actual entry and exit wounds are. Uh, quite devastating oh right okay so that's a much oh right so that's something i never actually thought about that obviously now if i was shooting a squirrel obviously a gray one um a, with a sub 12 foot pound i'd be going for a headshot only yeah, yeah, yeah. but with a some a 30 cal 100 foot pound yeah. you can go for the larger body and it's oh, still yeah. going to kill oh it'll kill it instantly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. stop the heart ticking and it's, it's all over and even not so much i mean you, there'll be certain sh situations where you, you'll be taking shots at squirrels and you can't see its head. Right. Behind a tree, it could be behind a leaf, you'd be behind a branch, it could be eaten, or if it's got, you know, its head won't be visible. So, a perfectly placed body shot into heart and lungs will drop it. Hmm. I won't want to do that with a sub -tool. Right, well, enough yapping, let's, uh, let's do some shooting. I'm sure I'm getting right, so. right, let's have a look. Where's that one? That one, that one. Mick has done an excellent job setting the gun up. We so say we put the King Cobra on top to make it a little bit easier for me because these old eyes are struggling a bit to see all that distance on 10 mag. So we have two choices. We can either shoot with a magazine or we've found that you can actually feed the pellets directly in from the back. Now PRS, uh, Gav Jones's place, actually makes a single shot loader. I'm a target shooter. I like to do single shot. So just to be awkward, I'm gonna give it single shot. So we're out at about 65 yards. I'm just gonna uh, just dial in the parallax a little bit. And we're going for the top left hand target. Well, fractionally low, but then again, my eyesight is obviously different to mix. Five shots we're gonna do. Oh, hi. I notice when you're shooting at distance, as you breathe in and out, you can see the barrel moving up and down. One thing we did do is we took the rail. There's a rail that sits on the top which pushes the scope high, but I brought the wrong mounts to the King Cobra. So we've had to take the, uh, the cheek riser off so that we could set it up for my eye. So that was my fault, so sorry, Tony. Not sure where that one hit. Certainly goes with a crack. <laughs> yes. On both ends. The, the one thing I'll certainly say is I'm not really used to shooting off, off bipods, but as a sub 12 foot pound shooter, I'm not finding this intimidating. Mm. Not like something like a, a 17 HMR. 
don't really know that much about the 22LR, but there is recoil, but it's very controllable. I pulled that one left, that was definitely me. I think also the bipod's not the best bipod, it's just a spare one head knocking about. Yeah. Well, we've got a group round about that by that. When Mick was setting up earlier, it was considerably tighter than I was capable of doing. But what an absolutely amazing piece of kit. The technology on these is, is superb. Um, but I think I need to learn to shoot it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, the base at Alpha Wolf, that's a hell of a lot of fun. It certainly is. One of the biggest questions you will, every time you pick up an FACI rifle when you ever go to any HFT event is what would happen if you shot an HFT target at 50, 60 yards with a 100 foot bound <laughs> FAC air rifle. Well, today we're gonna find out. And a huge thanks to Richard Woods at flopover.co.uk for giving us one of these targets to obliterate. So thank you very much, Richard. If I miss this, I'm never gonna live it down. No, you won't. I missed the kill. All right, let's give that another go. I can't even hit the kill zone <laughs> of a 40 mil target hey, with a 100 foot pound 30, 30 caliber round. Okay, let's go for the middle. Well, I think that hit in the kill zone. So yeah, I'm taking one of these to the World Championships. <laughs>
the, the thing I found is I found it as a sub 12 foot pound shooter and as a springer shooter, I did not find it difficult to, to shoot at all. The one thing that I think would make a big difference is a heavier uh, bipod. Yes. I, I felt that bipod, I was really, because I, I, I don't know, I, I don't use bipods, but bipods I've used in the past on you know, on full power rifles, mm -hmm. you put them in the ground, you lean into them. Yep. I felt there was a lot of flex in that bipod. It's just a cheap bipod, I've got left laying around, and obviously gun turn it without one, so we had to put in what we've got. Yeah. So it's, I don't even know the make of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, one other thing that uh, so I've got, you, you know, you, you probably tell me more about this now. Obviously, we're on private land today, and we're using. I'm able to use this rifle under an estate rifle uh, law. So basically, Mickey's has signed it out because it's on his ticket, and then as I'm shooting under Mick's supervision, that's legal for me to use. But you'd need a FAC, you just got a new ticket, yeah, yeah, right. And it's uh, I've actually got a 30 cal of mine, and it's just a straightforward FAC. So if you go to the police and you say, look, I, I want to get an FAC ticket, but I want to start off with an air rifle, you know, yep. with a high powered air rifle, yep. that they might look at that and say, well, this guy isn't just going for the maximum that he can get. He's I think be sensible. Just, up. just, just to, you know, don't, don't try and put the over their eyes, be honest with them. Yeah. Tell them what you want to do. And obviously you, you can have any gun you want, providing your land's clear for that caliber. Because that's the difference between a closed and open ticket. A closed ticket, the police have to come in and say this land is good for 556, 223 or you know, 308. Exactly. Open ticket, it's down to you it's, to make a decision. It's, it's deemed that I've got sufficient knowledge and of the area yeah. to know that the, 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 the round's going to be good for that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously this one here is absolutely perfect for it. Yeah. Uh, that's the beauty of an open ticket. If you don't get an open ticket, just on your first application. No. So my view is, you know, as a non-FAC holder, the Alpha Wolf, or you know other day states or yeah, other shoot you know, we're not just saying day state you know we're trying mm. to be open and honest here yep. you you're, you shoot a lot of fx don't shoot you a lot of that, yeah yeah air arms me a good quality high powered high caliber a large caliber fac air rifle i think could be a perfect introduction into your world of longer range shooting above 12 foot pound absolutely absolutely yeah i absolutely agree yeah and if i can shoot it Anyone can shoot it. Well, Mick, thank you so much. It's been a mine. wonderful day. We're off for a pork pie because we're both trying to lose weight. And uh, <laughs> watch out for our next video where we're going to be shooting some ballistics gel and some other bits and pieces, and we've got some more very interesting guns. We'll see you very again, again very, very soon. Goodbye from Life on the Range. Ta-da. Bye-bye. <laughs>